tip. <laughs> oh, look, our friends are here. Hi everyone. Welcome to another video of Once Upon a Story. Wanna see me do a trick? Um, tip. Maybe later, okay? You can show me your tricks again, but a little bit later, okay? I'm gonna just pop you over there, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, hi, how are you everyone? It's so nice to see you. Oh, by the way, my name is Belle. I told you this in British Sign Language. You really know a little bit about it, don't you? Actually, would you like to know how to ask someone for their name? Yeah, what's your name? How do you say that? Well, let me show you. Yeah? That's how you say what's your name in Britain Sign Language. I'd like to show you a little bit more. I'd like to teach you about feelings today. But I think I'm gonna do that at the end of our story because it's gonna be about my feelings, okay? What I felt during my adventure, during my story. So, it's my turn today to read you a story and I'm really happy to do so because well, you know already, I love books. The bookstore is my favorite shop. I love reading and I'm gonna love reading for you as well. Let me show you the book. <laughs> Here we go. We are gonna read Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> of course we are. <laughs> so, well, we're gonna start and then we'll see you as soon as we finish, okay? And yes, Chip, of course you will be able to listen to the story as well. If you want, you can help me. Okay, everyone, see you soon then. Bye for now. <laughs> Once upon a time, a young prince lived in a shining castle. One cold night, an old beggar woman arrived, offering him a single rose in return for shelter from the cold. Repulsed by her ugliness, he turned her away. Suddenly, she transformed into a beautiful enchantress. To punish the prince, she turned him into a hideous beast. Then she gave him a magic mirror and an enchanted rose, telling him he would bloom until his 21st year. To break the spell, he must love another and earn that person's love in return before the last petal fell. Nearby, in a small village, a beautiful young woman named Belle hurried through town. She greeted the townspeople and then rushed to her favorite shop, the bookstore. The owner gave her a book as a gift a dreamy look crossed Belle's face. It's my favorite. Far off places, daring sword fights, magic spells, a prince in disguise. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Belle rushed outside, reading as she worked. As Belle was immersed in her book, a handsome hunter named Gaston ran after her. Belle. The whole town's talking about you. It's not right for a woman to read. It's about time you got your nose out of those books and paid attention to more important things, like me. Belle tried to get away without being rude, but Gaston's friend Le Fou joined them and began to insult her father and inventor. My father's not crazy, he's a genius. As Belle spoke, an explosion boomed from her father's cottage and she took off running. At the cottage, Belle found her father and told him what the villagers were saying about her. They think I'm odd, Papa. Don't worry, Belle. My invention's going to change everything for us. We won't have to live in this little town forever. Belle's father hitched up the horse, Philip and set off for the fair with his new invention. Belle waved. Goodbye. Good luck. But Maurice got lost and accidentally led Philip into a bleak, misty forest. 
As he paused to get his bearings, Maurice saw two yellow eyes staring out of the darkness. It was a wolf. Philippe reared and bolted away. Terrified, Maurice ran through the forest with the wolves racing behind him. When he reached the tall, heavy gate, Maurice dashed inside, slamming the gate on the wolf whose sharp teeth snapped at his leg. Still trembling, Maurice turned to see a huge, forbidding castle. Hello? I've lost my horse and I need a place to stay for the night. Of course, monsieur, you are welcome here. Maurice whirled around. There was no one in sight. Then he looked down and saw a mantle clock with a stern, frowning face. Beside him stood the smiling candelabra. Maurice grabbed the clock and examined it. This is impossible. Why, you are alive? The enchantress had also turned all the prince's servants into household objects. As Coxworth, the mantel clock, protested, Lumiere, the candelabra, showed Maurice into the drawing room. There, he met a friendly teapot named Mrs. Potts and her son, a cute teacup named Chip. Suddenly, the door flew open. A voice boomed. There's a stranger here. Maurice jumped out of his chair. In the shadows lurked a large, hulking figure. Please, I need the place to stay. I'll give you a place to stay. The beast grabbed Maurice and dragged him out of the room. Back home at the cottage, Belle heard a knock at the door and opened it. Gaston, what a pleasant surprise. Belle, there is not a girl in town who wouldn't love to be in your shoes. Do you know why? Because I want to marry you. Gaston, I'm speechless. I'm sorry, but... But I just don't deserve you. As Gaston left, he tripped and fell in the mud. When Belle peeked out, she saw that the villagers had gathered in a yard hoping to see a wedding. The vicar and all Gaston's friends saw him humiliated. After the villagers and the very angry Gaston left, Belle ran outside to feed the chickens. There she found Philippe, alone. Philippe, what are you doing here? Where's Papa? The horse whined anxiously. Frightened, Belle leaped onto Philip and returned to the mysterious forest. Soon, they found the castle. What is this place? Belle tried to steady Philip. Then she saw Maurice's hat on the ground. Belle hurried inside the gloomy castle and wandered down the vast, deserted corridors. Papa, are you here? It's Belle. No one replied, but Belle didn't know that the enchanted objects had seen her. With joy, Lumiere danced around the mantel clock. Don't you see? She's the one. She has come to break the spell. Without noticing them, Belle continued to search for her father. Finally, Belle discovered Maurice locked in a tower. Papa, we have to get you out of there. Suddenly, she heard a voice from the shadows. What are you doing here? Belle gasped. Please, let my father go. Take me instead. You... you will take his place? Belle asked the voice to step into the light and was horrified when she saw the huge, ugly beast. To save her father, however, Belle agreed to stay in the beast's castle forever. The beast dragged Maurice out of the castle and threw him into a carriage that would return him to town. There, the inventor stumbled into a tavern where Gaston was surrounded by his friends. Please, 
I need your help. A horrible beast has been locked into a dungeon. And did he have cruel sharp fangs? One villager sneered. Maurice grabbed the man's coat. Yes, yes, will you help me out? We'll help you out, old man. Gaston and his pals tossed the inventor out of the tavern. But Maurice's wild story gave Gaston an idea. At the castle, Bell nervously followed the beast upstairs. He paused for a moment. The castle is your home now, so you can go anywhere you like. Except the West Wing. Bell stared back. What's in the West Wing? It's forbidden! Glaring, the beast opened the door to her room. You will join me for dinner. That's not a request. After the beast stomped off, Belle flung herself from the bed. I'll never escape from this prison or see my father again. That night, Belle refused to dine with the beast. Instead, she crept downstairs to the kitchen. All the enchanted objects fed and entertained her. Then Cosworth agreed to take her on a tour. Bell halted beneath a dark net staircase. What's up there? Nothing, absolutely nothing of interest at all in the West Wing. But when Cosworth wasn't looking, Bell slipped away and raced up the staircase to a long hallway lined with broken mirrors. Bell cautiously opened the door at the end of the corridor and entered a dank, filthy room strewn with broken furniture, torn curtains and grey nude bones. The only living object was a rose shimmering beneath a glass dome. Entranced, Belle lifted the cover and reached out to touch one soft pink petal. She did not hear the beast enter the room. I warned you never to come here. The beast advanced on Belle. Get out! Get out! Terrified by his rage, she turned and ran. Belle rushed past Cosworth and Lumiere as she fled the castle. Promise or not promise, I can't stay here another minute. She found Philippe and they galloped through the snow until they met a pack of fierce, hungry wolves. Terrified, the horse reared and Belle fell to the ground. When Belle tried to defend Philippe, the wolves turned on her, snarling. Suddenly, a large paw pulled the animals off her. It was the beast. As Belle struggled to her feet, the wolves turned and attacked the beast growling fiercely. With a ferocious howl, the beast flung off his attackers. As the surprised wolves ran off into the woods, the beast collapsed, wounded. Belle knew that this was her chance to escape, but when she looked at the fallen beast, she could not leave him. Here, lean against Philip. I'll help you back to the castle. Meanwhile, Gaston and Lefou were plotting to have Maurice put into Monsieur d'Arc's insane asylum, unless Belle agreed to marry Gaston. At the castle, Belle cleaned the beast's wounds and thanked him for saving her life. Later, she was quite surprised when he showed her a beautiful library. I can't believe it. I've never seen so many books in all my life. The beast smiled for the first time. Then it's yours. That evening, Mrs. Potts and the other objects watched Belle read the story to the beast. They were filled with hope that the beast and Belle were falling in love. 
Gradually, the mood in the castle began to change. Belle and the Beast read together, dined together and played together in the snow. They even had a snowball fight. When Belle watched the big awkward beast try to feed some birds, she realized that he had a kind, gentle side to him, something that she hadn't seen before. In turn, the beast began to hope that Belle would begin to care for him. He tied his room, beaded, and dressed up for the evening. He was overjoyed when Belle taught him how to dance. That evening, the beast asked Belle if she was happy. Yes, I only wish I could see my father. I miss him so much. There is a way. The beast showed Belle the magic mirror. In it, she saw her father lost in the woods, ill from his search for her. When the beast saw the unhappy look on Belle's face, he decided to let her go, even if he meant that he would never be human again. Before Belle left, he handed her the magic mirror. Take it with you, so you'll always have a way to look back and remember me. Heartbroken, the beast watched as Belle rode off on Philip. When she found her poor father in the forest, Belle brought him home to their cottage so she could nurse him back to health. But almost as soon as they arrived, a tall, thin man knocked on the door. It was Monsieur Dark. He had come to take her father to an insane asylum. No, I won't let you. Belle blocked the way. Le Fou had also convinced the villagers that Maurice was crazy because he was raving like a lunatic about some terrible beast. Gaston put his arm around Belle. I can clear up this little misunderstanding. If you marry me, just say yes. I'll never marry you. My father's not crazy. I can prove it. Belle showed them the beast in the magic mirror. It's not vicious. It's really kind and gentle. Enraged. Gaston shouted, She's as crazy as the old man. I say we kill the beast. The mob of villagers locked Belle and her father in the cellar and stormed the beast's castle. As the villagers battled the enchanted objects, Gaston forced the beast onto the castle roof. He clapped the beast, who didn't even try to resist. Get up! Or oh, are you too kind and gentle to fight back? Stop! Chip had helped Belle and Maurice escape from the cellar. When the beast saw Belle, he grabbed Gaston by the throat, but his love for Belle had made him too human. He let Gaston go and faced Belle. Without warning, Gaston stabbed the beast in the back. The beast rolled. Gaston stepped back and tumbled off the roof to his death. Wounded, the beast gazed at Belle before he collapsed. She ran to him and held him in her arms. No, please. I love you. Suddenly, the rain began to shimmer. Slowly the beast opened his eyes, and in astonishment, he watched his paws transform into hands. He held them out to Belle. Belle, it's me. Belle hesitated and looked into his eyes. It is you. The prince drew her close and kissed her. Then they watched happily as Cosworth, Lumiere, Chip, Mrs. Potts and all the other servants once again became human. 
true love had finally broken the spell and everyone danced for joy. Hello again everyone! Did you like our story? It was a very good story, I think so too. Now, before I go, yes, I'm gonna teach you some more words in British Sign Language. I'm going to go through my story and I'm gonna tell you what I felt. I think I want to start in the bookstore. So, bookstore, my favorite shop. Of course I was happy. So, how you say happy? Happy. Happy. Oh, very happy as well. Yeah? And then let's see. Hmm. Gaston arrived, so he started talking to me. And I didn't want to be rude, of course not, but I was a bit bored. So, how do you say bored? If you are bored, that's bored, okay? And then I got also a little bit angry. Why? Because, well, I'm sure you remember Le Fou, Gaston's friend. He was insulting my dad. Uh, it's not right, isn't it? No, not a good thing. So, I got a bit angry. So, if you want to say angry in British language, that's how you do it. Angry. Okay? And then remember when I went to look for my father, he was in the Beast's castle and he was prisoner, so I offered to take his place. Well, when the Beast released him, I thought I wasn't gonna see him anymore, so I was quite sad and upset. So that's sad, sad, yeah, but that's upset. But stop with these kind of feelings, okay? Let's try to find some good ones. So let's see, the Beast and I became friends and we also had a snowball fight. That was funny. <laughs> you know what to say funny? Funny. Yeah? Funny. Yeah? <laughs> and then let's see, oh, that was beautiful. You remember our ball? I was wearing that beautiful yellow dress and the Beast was really lovely too. But he was quite shy and embarrassed, he was. So that's shy, shy, and that's embarrassed. Yeah? Embarrassed. Hmm? But he looked very nice in that suit. So that's how you say nice. Nice. Yeah? Nice. And he was really kind when, if you remember, he showed me my father in his magic mirror and my father was not feeling very well so he let me go so I could go look for him so that was kind and that's how you say kind 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 yeah and I want to teach you just one more at the end we had another ball and we were all happily together my father, all the villagers that they were humans again it was great, it was a great feeling and that's how you say great. Great. Yeah? Great. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think I taught you a lot today. <laughs> I hope you're going to remember some of these words. I think it's time for me to go now. So, bye everyone. Stay safe. See you soon. Oh, I forgot to say, please put a like on this video if you did like it. And also, don't forget to subscribe so you're not gonna miss any of the other characters that they're gonna read you a story, okay? Bye!